Welcome to Discovering Geometry with Mrs. Berry. This is lesson six. Today we'll be talking about triangles and quadrilaterals. We'll first, first talk about assumptions when we're doing diagrams, classifying triangles, and then classifying quadrilaterals. So to assume is to accept something as true without proof or facts. In some diagrams, we can assume things. When we're looking at diagrams in geometry, we can assume that lines are straight. If it looks like a straight line, it's a straight line. We can also assume that if two lines intersect, they intersect at just one point. They're not curvy lines that intersect multiple times. Two straight lines will intersect one time. We can assume that points on a line are collinear. And we can also assume that all points are coplanar unless they specifically have planes drawn. So we can assume that most of our diagrams will be on the same plane. However, when we look at diagrams, we cannot assume things. We cannot assume that lines that look parallel are actually parallel. We cannot assume that lines that look perpendicular are actually perpendicular. And we cannot assume that pairs of angles or polygons that look congruent are actually congruent. These are, these are the things that we're going to have to prove by making connections in the diagram. So we can't just look at two triangles and say they look congruent. We're going to have to prove that by connecting different parts. In the diagram below, which pairs of lines are perpendicular? And which pairs of lines are parallel? which pairs of triangles are congruent. So remember, these all these A and B and lines E and F, they look parallel, but we can't assume that in our diagram. We can see the markings here and the markings here, and sh those are showing that these lines are parallel. So AB is parallel to line CD. None of these look even perpendicular. So let's go over here. All of these look perpendicular. In fact, JKQM looks like a square, but I cannot say that based on the diagram. I do know that perpendicular lines form a right angle. So this right angle right here means that line JK is perpendicular to JM. That's the only one that we can know, that these two lines are perpendicular. These other ones look like it, but we can't assume that. <clears throat> How about triangles that are congruent? Which triangles can we know are congruent? Well, congruent means the same size and the same shape. In triangles, that means all the sides have to be the same and all the angles have to be the same. T, V, U does look congruent to TSU. And I see that this side is congruent to this side, those three markings. But this one over here doesn't have three markings. So TV is not congruent to TS. That means that this triangle cannot be congruent to this one. Let's keep looking. Over here, we have a marking of one, two, and three. Which other triangle has a marking of one, two, and three? TSU has a marking of one, two, and three. So one here, two here, and three. One, two, and three. So their sides are congruent. Let's double check the angles. Between one and two is an angle with a one marking. So between one and two is an angle with a one marking. And then the next one is three, this one is three, and this one is two. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Remember how we named them, triangle X, Y, Z. And when I named it, I went from the angle with one to the angle of two and the angle with a three marking. So when I draw the next one, I need to line it up with the same Markings start with the angle with one, so that would be S and then T and then U. S, T, U. 
So again, triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle STU. Now let's start classifying some triangles. What is a right triangle? Let's give it a good definition. We see two triangles over here that are right triangles. We see the measurement of their angles listed. So that must be the important part. I see a right angle here and I see a 90 degree angle here. Over here in the not right triangles, well, this one's not a triangle. This one has our measurements and none of them are 90. And this one, oh, 91, it's close, but it's not 90. So I think that a right triangle is a triangle with exactly one right angle. It can't have two right angles or it wouldn't be a triangle. If you don't believe me, try to draw a triangle with two right angles. What is an acute triangle? Are they cute like you could put a bow on them? Not quite. Let's look at the measurements of these angles. How do they compare with the measurements over here to the ones that are not acute triangles? Hopefully you remember what an acute angle is. It looks like these three triangles all have acute angles. Not one of them is a right angle or an obtuse angle. This triangle has a right angle and this triangle has an obtuse angle. So we could say a triangle with acute angles but more specifically, a triangle with all acute angles, or you could even say a triangle with three acute angles. All of the angles on an acute triangle will measure less than 90 degrees. <clears throat> what is an obtuse triangle? We have two obtuse triangles right here. We have obtuse angles here, but not a triangle. We have a triangle that doesn't have any obtuse angles and another triangle with no obtuse angles. An obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. So a triangle with one obtuse angle, you could also call it a triangle with one angle that measures greater than 90 degrees. But remember, we've already defined an obtuse angle so we could just use that instead of saying an angle that measures greater than 90. What is a scalene triangle? These three, and these three are not. This one's not a triangle. This one, the markings that we see is a right angle and um, two sides that are the same length. This one, we see three sides that are the same length and a 60 degree angle. This one, what are we seeing here? Well, it has a right angle and this one looks obtuse and this one looks like it might be obtuse or right. But what markings do we see? It's that all the side lengths are different. So a triangle with no side lengths the same, we could also call it a triangle with three unequal sides. I think either definition would be good. What is an equilateral triangle? <clears throat> what markings do we see here that make these equilateral and these not? So this is a polygon with three sides the same length, but it's not a triangle. So we need to make sure triangles in our definition. This triangle has two sides the same length. This one doesn't have any markings to say they're the same length. This triangle has three markings, the same length, and three angles that are the same. This one just has the three sides that are the same of eight. So I think we could say equal lateral means they have equal lateral, meaning sides. So a triangle with three equal or congruent sides. All three of them have to be equal or congruent. As we see here, not just two, but all three. What is an isosceles triangle? Over here we have isosceles triangles and over here we don't. In fact, none of these are triangles. 
What do you notice about the isosceles triangles? This one shows two side lengths the same, two side lengths the same. This one shows three side lengths the same. And this one shows two side lengths the same. So is it a triangle with two sides the same or two or more sides the same? Based on this picture saying it's an isosceles triangle, I think we need to go with a triangle with two or more congruent sides. Now isosceles triangles have a few special terms for them. In an isosceles triangle, the angle between the two sides of equal length. So here's on my isosceles triangle. These two sides are equal length. This angle in between is called the vertex angle. This is the vertex angle. It's gonna be the vertex of the triangle. Yes, the triangle has three vertices, but this one specifically in isosceles triangle is the vertex angle. In an isosceles triangle, the side opposite the vertex angle, we'll call the base. So in this triangle, the base is on the side, but a lot of times we draw an isosceles triangle possibly like this, and then the base is at the bottom because these sides are the same. The two angles that are opposite the sides of equal length. So here are sides of equal length. Our angles that are opposite would be these two down here. They're also on either side of the base. Those are called our base angles. Make sure you label all of these on your diagram on your notes. Just like we have special triangles, we have special quadrilaterals to define also. Here are some trapezoids. I hope you think this is funny. What are they trapping right here? It's a zoid. What do we see about the trapezoids that we don't see over here? I see two parallel sides and they're opposite or else they wouldn't intersect, right? But over here, this one has two parallel sides, but another set of two parallel sides. This one has two parallel sides, but it has two sides in between. If I count, this is not a quadrilateral. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. It has four sides with two parallel sides. But is that a good definition? Should we say that it has exactly two parallel sides? You could even say um, one set of opposite sides parallel. But again, you can't have a quadrilateral with two parallel sides that are next to each other or else they would never intersect to make that a real quadrilateral. What is a kite? Here are pictures of kites. Here are pictures that are not kites. I'm seeing two sets of congruent sides. So could it be a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent sides? Well, this has two pairs of congruent sides, but they're opposite each other. This one has three congruent sides and one that's not, so not two pair. This one has two pair, but it's not a quadrilateral. This one, all four of them are the same, so I guess it doesn't have two pair. Let's fix this definition a little bit. What about a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent congruent sides? That knocks this one out. These are not adjacent where they're congruent. These are adjacent where they're congruent. These are adjacent where they're congruent. What is a parallelogram? Well, we definitely start with a quadrilateral. Each of these has four sides. This one doesn't have four sides. This one does and this one does. All right, so it's four-sided. Um, and it has parallel sides here and here. 
This one also has two sets of parallel sides. This one has one set of parallel sides. This one doesn't mark any. A good definition for a parallelogram, a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel, or maybe with two sets of parallel sides. What is a rhombus? Hmm, I'm seeing all of these with markings of parallelograms, these four anyway. This one's not a quadrilateral, so let's start with the definition of a quadrilateral. Four sides. Opposite sides are parallel, but what makes these two different from these? These have same length sides here and here. This doesn't mark its side lengths at all. This one has all four of the same side length. This one also has all four of the same side length. So I think a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel and all side lengths the same but maybe we could use um, a little bit more. What if we started with that opposite sides parallel? Where did that come from? Our parallelogram, right? If we just said it's a parallelogram with four congruent sides, that could cut down on the length of our definition and still make it accurate. Just a few more, what's a rectangle? That's a shape that we've been known hopefully since preschool or kindergarten. We know what to look for. We see these two are rectangles and I, I see this as a rectangle, it looks like, but maybe the markings aren't there to show me that it is for sure. This one is, doesn't have four sides. This one over here, why isn't it a rectangle? <clears throat> well, I think a rectangle has four of the same corners, which would be 90 degrees, and opposite sides are the same length. They're also parallel. So a quadrilateral with four right angles and opposite sides parallel. These have opposite sides parallel, but we're not marking that they're right angles. Instead of saying a quadrilateral with four right angles and opposite sides parallel, what if we use that opposite sides parallel from the parallelogram and just said that a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles? And last, we come to our square. How can we define a square? So many markings on these. What are they marking? That all four corners are the same? That opposite sides are parallel? and that all the side lengths are the same. All the side lengths are the same. Here we have the side lengths the same, but it's not marking any of the corners are parallel. Here the corners are the same, but we're not marking side lengths. This one only has three sides, and this one's just marking the corners. So it's a quadrilateral, it has four sides. It has four right angles. The opposite sides are parallel, and it has four congruent sides. We could cut that definition down a little bit, right? What if we start with something we've already defined? What if we call it a rectangle with four congruent sides? Remember, a rectangle was a quadrilateral with four right angles and opposite sides parallel. So we just say a rectangle with four congruent sides. I challenge you to think of another way to define it in the same length of definition. What else could we start with instead of a rectangle? We could call it a rhombus with four right angles. Remember a rhombus had opposite sides parallel and it had four congruent sides. So the only thing missing would be the four right angles. Thanks for learning with me today. See you next time.